Hi guys, John the Firearms Instructor, and welcome to our live. I hope you're doing wonderful this evening. You know the routine if you're on this live and you're watching it for the very first time. We want to hear from you. We want to know who you are and where you're from. And we want to give you a big shout out for physically being here on the on the live. We appreciate you very much. Obviously, if you're watching this after the fact, like a replay, you can always comment on that as well. We'd love to hear from you as well. Um, it's very important we do these lives for you guys. Um, we have a great, great show this evening. I think I, I think it's something that uh, is a necessity for each and every one of us to get ourselves into a position. We're kind of stalling here for a little bit to get the people on. Uh, we've already got 10 already up, uh, which is pretty good uh, for a Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. Uh, Tuesday night, you know what tonight is? It's taco night, so we got to make sure we have a great show. So I'm gonna make us tacos when we get home. So let's talk about uh, the show itself. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. We are a live gun range, and we are open till seven o'clock. So there could be an opportunity for somebody to come in and shoot. So you may hear some shooting. Uh, you may hear some gunshots and say things like that. That's just part of being running a retail business. Now, uh, the door is open. I have somebody here helping me today. Thank you, Danny. Uh, and that uh, you know, we are going to try to be un uninterrupted. But sometimes that has to happen when someone wants to talk to the man. Which, yeah, I'm the man, all right? I'm the man who cleans the toilets and wipes up the floor and sweeps the floor. and. Starts the morning and goes the end, but uh, that's part of the deal. That's that's owning your own business. I'm getting a little bit of verbiage, so I'm gonna back it down just a little bit. Uh, how's that? That sounds a little better, not so staticky. Back, back, back. Guys, give me a little bit of heads up on how I sound. Am I sounding very, very staticky, or am I sounding okay? Give me, give me somebody, give make a comment. I would appreciate that very much, very much. Um, all right, so here we go. We got a few people on. Miss Johnson's already there. Hey, babe. Hey, hello, Miss Johnson. How are you? I'm glad you're here. You're always one of my best uh, 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 watchers. Uh, thanks for the knowledge of the video. Spider Jack, appreciate that, Spider. Mom uh, are here. Ta Natasha's here. Danny Schultz is here. Uh, Spider, sounds great. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Fred, thank you very much. Sounds perfect. Beautiful. So we're going to start out with our sponsor. And you know who I am. I'm, I'm John Johnson. I'm the owner and operator of a firearms training facility in beautiful Cape of Coral, Florida. And I specialize in you. We specialize in a first-time shooter that needs some support and help. And it is my passion to take each and every one of you and make you a better shooter. And we're doing this a lot of different ways. We do it through our YouTube channel which we have multiple, multiple, multiple videos on how to shoot a pistol properly. Uh, we do it through our TikTok. Our, I'm not a great dancer, though, so you got to watch my moves. Uh, we do it through Facebook. We do it through Instagram. We have a lot of different ways. You have an opportunity to start following us on all the social media content as well. That helps us as a business grow, and we do appreciate that very much. So our sponsor to this week is Aura, and Aura is an online protection program that keeps you and your safe, you and your family safe from online fraudsters, predators, and online scams. Uh, Aura basically has a 14-day free trial that we're giving to you to try them out. Now, I can tell you, they gave me a free account to see what their product was like, and I had it for a couple weeks prior to starting announcing what they were, and they have really lowered my scam emails that I'm receiving on a regular basis. They have three plans. They have a single plan, a couple's plan, and a family of five. And that family of five does not need to be living in the home, but they are going to protect up to 50 pieces of equipment, like cell phones and and computers and laptops and protect your identity from the bad guys if you have an opportunity to look at aura it'll be in the link below in the youtube 
description of this, and it will allow you to pick this thing up for 14 days for free. Take advantage of these deals we're getting for you guys. These companies like this are protecting, uh, are, are sponsoring us, and they're paying us a little bit to do these videos, and we are actually physically wanting you to take care of them a little bit as well. So if you have an opportunity, Aura, it's the safest way to protect yourself online. To find out more, check the descriptions below. All right, that's enough of that. So we are going to talk about point shooting. Now, if you don't know what point shooting is, that is using your weapon without physically looking at your sights. Now, I did a video a couple days ago on point shooting, and it's doing pretty well. Uh, you know, we don't get a ton of we don't get a ton, ton, ton of views, but this is up there to four to five hundred views so far. So I'm pretty proud of it. And I, you know, I edited it myself and I've added a lot of stuff and we're doing a lot of green screen things. But basically, it is a defensive accuracy product. We need to make sure we understand what a sight is on the gun for. The sight on a pistol is there for your convenience. The red dot that's on your pistol is there for convenience. You don't need either one of those to shoot a pistol. Most of the time in a high defense situation, you're not looking at the site anyways. You're looking at the bad guy. And we need to practice point shooting as much as possible. So I've had, a, I've in the video, I have explained point shooting to a point, and I actually did some point shooting. I can tell you this. I learned very quickly that 25, 25 and 20 yards, 20 feet, 7 yards, and 10, 7 yards, 8 yards, 9 yards, 10 yards, I need really, really work at it. Now, keep in mind, I used an 8-inch paper plate IDPA target. Our actual vital triangle is a lot bigger than that, but we need to work on keeping that gun level. And I'm going to go through each one of these and explain to you. I think it's going to be something. Now, what I want you to do is comment for me and let me know what you're doing for your defensive accuracy. Are you practicing point shooting? Have you done it before? Because a lot of these small pistols, like the little 380s and stuff like that, there's hardly a sight on them to begin with. So you just want to be able to, most of the 380 pistols are not going to be very comfortable for a man's hand. Even a woman's hand sometimes, uh, they are small pistols, and you're not going to have time for sights. So, you know, I carry a little Diamondback 9 millimeter in my pocket for the last three and a half to four years. When I started carrying my pocket, it made it a lot easier for me. But I do have to practice with it a little bit because it is a smaller piece. And the smaller the gun doesn't mean small recoil. Smaller the gun means bigger recoil. So let's go ahead and pull this PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to put the PowerPoint presentation up full screen. I'm going to take my beautiful face off so we can go ahead and do this tonight. And you guys keep commenting. Keep doing it. We appreciate it very much. Let's try to get this to 20, 20 uh, viewers. Let's try we get to 20 viewers. All right. Let's go ahead and pop this one up now. There we go. And I'm going to go to full screen. There we go. Oh, yeah, already busted through there. All right. Top 10 tips for point shooting your handgun. You know, uh, we need to practice all forms of shooting. We can't just practice right-handed, right-eye dominant. We need to practice with our left hand. We need to shoot one-handed on both sides of it. We need to work a lot of different stuff because we don't know what situation we're going to be in at the time that it happens, and we need to make sure we can do everything we can. Have Let me ask you a question. If you're right-handed and right-eye dominant and all that stuff, have you taken your magazine out with your non-dominant hand yet? Have you loaded a magazine with your non-dominant hand yet? Can you load a magazine one-handed? Now, all that stuff's done here at the store. I actually was lucky enough to have a left-handed man come in who was right-handed. He lost his right hand in an accident. And he was wanting to get back to shooting. And I physically had to help him become proficient with his non-dominant hand. 
And it was kind of one of those fun things because both of us learned together. He actually had a fake arm with a finger hand on there that was adjustable by the cell phone. We could adjust the grip and everything else like that. We just couldn't get his finger in the trigger. Was it? He, he didn't have the dexterity. So I said, we're going to stop this right now. We're going to let you shoot with your left hand. And he had said, oh, I can't shoot my left hand. I said, well, you're going to have to, buddy. You don't have another one. And we got to the point where we were, he was pretty damn accurate. And he was shooting a 40 caliber lock. So that was pretty impressive the end of that day. And I, I was, uh, and the next day, the two days after that, Johnny and I, my, my son, we did a full video of shooting one handed. And that's in our YouTube, YouTube, uh, uh, playlist. If you have an opportunity to check it out, I would because there's a lot of great advice on shooting with your non dominant hand. All right. So, <clears throat> oh, okay. So, I want to tell you about our, our ebook again, guys. Our ebook, Master Series ebook. Uh, this is selling pretty well. I was kind of shocked on how, how well it's going right now. And this gives you all of the tips and tricks why you're shooting low and left. Low and left is probably one of the most challenging things for most students. Now, don't worry, left-handers. Uh, there is a, this book will work for you as well. You just reverse everything I'm saying and change it out. You know, right-handed students shoot low and left because they got the gun over their nose and not over their dominant eye. They, you know, left-handers do the same, but it just reto it moves over to the right instead of the left. We what well, the reason why I'm telling you about this is this ebook is downloadable. It is we have YouTube videos that correspond with it. We have a full YouTube playlist for this ebook, and we're giving you five dollars off if you enter live 2024 at checkout. You click the link below or go in the description below and click the link. You're gonna get this. Our newest uh, ebook for only four dollars and ninety nine cents. Four dollars and ninety nine cents to stop shooting low and left is well worth it, guys. So if you get an opportunity, check that out. All right, all right. Number one, number one tip. This number one tip is probably the most important things I can give you on most most of the time. This works on a lot of different stuff, but I need you to focus on the target not your sights. Now, obviously in point shooting, we are not using sights at all. We are using extensively aim, instinctively aiming at the target. And this is probably one of the best advices I can give somebody. You, If you look at a firearm, there is a frame and there is the slide. And the back side of that is where the you just want to focus on the center of that gun being in the center of the target. And then we need to work on our trigger engagement to keep our fingers from getting too far into the gun. And then work on a, a decent cadence. We don't have to be super slow, but we can't be super fast because if we're not controlling the weapon, it's going to push those rounds all over that target. So we need to kind of visually focus on the target not the sights of the gun that's why i highly recommend if you if you have the opportunity to do this black out your sights the best you can now, if you have a g2 that has sights in the front and sights in the back if you got a glock that has sights in the front and sights in the back you can always use black tape or something like that don't don't take it, but if you have a G3 that only has sights in the front, you can actually just tape up tape up the front sight. Um, not that you need to tape it up, but you, you tend to focus on your sights when you're shooting. We want to try to get around that as much as we can. So focus it on your target and not your sights. Point shooting is about instinctively aiming at the target and focusing on the impact. You know, realistically, if you, you lay it back out and you watch some of these videos on YouTube and other places where cops are getting involved in these defensive shooting um, uh, you know, the, the bad guys are there and they're fighting each other. Uh, those guys aren't using sights at that point in time. They're just trying to protect themselves and get through the battle. So, 
you know, that's one of the things we need to practice. Let me ask you this. When's the last time you guys, or have you ever point shot? I mean, that's the key thing. We just had a defensive class uh, two Saturdays ago. Maybe it's three Saturdays ago now. We all run together after a while, but three Saturdays ago, defensive shooting. We, we One of the drills we did was defensive shooting, and we sat out to a point where we were starting at three yards, went to five yards, went to seven yards, went to the, our, our our 10 yards that we have here at the store, and we pushed all the way back. Now, most of the students did did pretty well. Miss Johnson was in that class. And she got all the way out there. Her group got a little wide at the end. Uh, we had uh, Natasha. Well, she was there for that and was able to do it. And then we had uh, Tommy, Tommy Hirschgraf. He was one of my buddies. And matter of fact, Tommy was on fire that day. I, I, I talked about him last week. I was so impressed. Point shooting, his groups were still in three inches. The man was The man was on fire that night, you know. So uh, you can do it, guys. You just got to work at it. So this is what I'd recommend. Set yourself up a goal to conquer a distance. This is what I did in that video. I conquered three. I knew three was going to be easy for me. I really didn't think I was going to have a problem. Now, when I shot three in the video, I shot two high and three in the circle. Now, I wanted them all in the circle. Now, what you want to do is you want to concentrate on getting all of them in the circle. Once you've got them all in the circle, you know with a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be able to get them all in that circle. Then you're going to push it back. Push it back to the five. Do the exact same thing. And get, get confident. Get your grip good. Get your trigger engagement good. You don't have to shoot this fast yet. Don't shoot it fast until you know you can conquer it. And once you can conquer it, once you keep a gun level, Punch that thing out there and punch those five shots and see what you do with it. See how wide your group gets. But this is what I would do. And now I would I would not do this consistently all the time, but I would add it into my uh, training uh, routine. I would add it in probably. Maybe we could do it in the beginning of the of the range, or maybe we could do it mid. Or maybe before you go home, you could do it. Maybe get comfortable doing it. I mean, you want to do this with a lot of different pistols, but probably the best pistol to do it with is your carry pistol, the one that you are going to use for defensive purposes, because that's going to give us the best scenario. Because once we point shot with point shooting with one with two hands controlling the weapon, then we're going to dump it down to one hand with the weapon and see how well we do. And then we're going to do it with our non-dominant hand and see how well we do. Because, you know, in all forms and shapes and sizes, we assume that nothing's going to happen to us and we're going to keep our dominant hand through the whole battle. We could very easily lose our dominant hand in a battle very quickly. And we got to be able to make sure that we can do everything with both hands. When's the last time? You can comment below if you'd like. When's the last time you have engaged a pistol with your non-dominant hand? When's the last time you've taken your magazine out with your non-dominant hand? There are so many things that you need to practice to get yourself into. Remember, why we go to the range is to build that muscle memory just in case, right? Because when we get in a critical defense situation, you're not going to stand there and say, hey, what did John say? What did he say? Grip, stance, trigger control? All that crap goes out the window in this situation. You just got to be able to run the gun and be get comfortable. So number one is focus on your target. All right, number two, a lot of people ask me all the time, hey, how can I learn to shoot with both eyes open? Or should I close my eyes or should I keep one open? You know how difficult it is for a new student to focus on the target and the sights and everything else. It's easier when you shut an eye to look through the tar through through your sights. But when you're shooting a point shoot weapon, you want to have that peripheral vision. You want to be able to see both of them. You always want to put it out in front of you and focus it on the target itself. You want to keep both eyes open. This is the easiest way for a student to learn to shoot with both eyes open. 
And why do we want to shoot with both eyes open? I've kind of already told you, but that's but the peripheral vision. When you close an eye, you can do it right now. Close one of your eyes and hold, let's say you're right-handed, close your left eye and hold your hand out behind you. You're not going to see that hand and, with your eyes closed until it almost gets to 11 o'clock. Now, do that same same thing, but keep your hands open. I can physically see that left hand all the way back probably until I'm going to be like 7, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, I still can see it. So that's going to help us with our defensive accuracy because then we're going to have both eyes open and maintain that uh, awareness, right? Um, keep both eyes open to maintain a better situational awareness. This will help you react quickly in a self-defense situation. If you have to close an eye to shoot a, a weapon, uh, it becomes somewhat challenging for you. Now, imagine if we take this same scenario we just did and put us in a low light situation. We're going to definitely be in a disadvantage when we can't see what we're doing either, right? So we want to kind of get those eyes open. And honestly, guys, in a high defense situation, do you really think you're going to have one eye closed when you're shooting your weapon at the bad guy? Are you going to have both eyes open, wide open, like you're nervous and you're scared and you can't believe what's happening to you? That's most likely what's going to happen. So we need to practice shooting with both eyes open. There's a couple ways we can do this. I Miss Johnson had a real problem with it for a while, and she still doesn't keep both eyes open, but she squints one. And that's kind of what I would talk to you first. Squint your eye. Don't close it. Now, I took a pair of glasses from Miss Johnson, and I actually put a dot on it. To cover up her non dot she hated it. She didn't like it at all. But the high idea with it, we're trying to keep both eyes open. If you can't see if the eye is open, but it's not taken out, what happens is we have a dominant eye on our face. And when you have two eyes open, the, the dominant eye and the non-dominant eye are fighting each other. So you get this weird double vision thing when you're looking at your sights. But if you take a pair of glasses, you could do this with a pair of cheap safety glasses. You could rough it up or sand it so it's makes it foggy. I actually took a, a little black dot and put on Heidi's glasses. Uh, or you could actually take some scotch tape, some of the Christmas scotch tape, which is not completely clear, and put that on the inside or the outside, which will fog up that one side and will help you become more aware of both eyes open. With both eyes open, you're going to maintain a better situational awareness and a better ability to react to a self-defense situation. So obviously, obviously, keeping both eyes open is an important part of that. All right, let's go to number three. Now, obviously, look at this grip. This grip is terrible. There's no way you could control a grip like this. Uh, you know, I put this in because I just want to see. We call this grip the teacup grip, and teacupping is no way to control a weapon uh, because they, I, I've, told you many times before this firearm is a bully and anything you give it it's going to take how much control is this hand on the bottom of her her other hand going to control the recoil it's not going to control the recoil it's not going to do anything for you so getting that proper combat grip if you don't know what a combat grip is it's a two thumbs forward grip there are plenty of videos on my on my youtube channel from shorts to videos to long it's all involved in the grip. Everything starts, the foundation of shooting of any kind starts with a good, solid grip. Practicing, practicing grip and stance ensures stability and controlling the firearm. We know about stance, feet shoulder width apart, reach, uh, leaning forward just a little bit, getting that combat move. Because technically, in the defensive class the other night, uh, it's couple of hours ago i had the guys backing up had targets coming to them and we had to move with the weapon you know there's a big drill called get off the x and get off the x and you're trying to get out in front of or to the left or to the right of the bad guy you don't want to be standing directly in front of them bad guys don't train we don't have thursday night bad guy night here at the range 
and and they're able to come here and practice all their bad stuff. We don't we don't do that. They don't do that. They don't practice at all. So any kind of training you're doing is beneficial to you and bad for the bad guy. So get out there and practice all this stuff. But proper grip and stance will ensure stability and control of your farm. Now, what's the proper stance? You know, obviously, there's a lot of people that stay, you know, at the range. They're trying to control the recoil with their feet. You've seen it. One foot forward, one foot back, kind of leaning into the gun. What kind of grip is that? What, what, what kind of stance is that? That's not a good stance. That's not going to help you control it. And it locks you down in your mobility. So you want your feet shoulder width apart, bouncing on your knees, leaning forward just a little bit to get your nose over your toes and drive that weapon, ladies, with your back muscles. Gentlemen, drive that weapon with your pecs and you will control that weapon and keep it out in front of you because the idea of the defensive uh, combat grip is to allow the gun to stay as stable as possible while we're while we're running it very quickly you know defensive shooting is a fast thing it's not simple it's not it's not we're not bullseye shooters here guys we're working on that vital triangle if you don't know what vital triangle is look at your shoulders and go to your groin look at your chest that's a big target and all we have to do is impact it's not about bullseyes it's about impacting our job is to stop the bad guy bad guy's job is to go away and we're trying to stop the bad guy. And the how, only way to do that is with proper grip and stance. All right, we'll hit number three. That's number three. We'll hit number four. Number four is train your muscle memory through consistent practicing and repetition. is key to improving your point shooting skills. Look at this gentleman here. I keep wondering who this is. I I. I don't think it's my buddy, Dan. I think he's too skinny for Danny. But uh, I had a buddy uh, that I worked with for a long time. And, you know, I I can't tell. Uh, but uh, he's got a good stance there. He's got the gun out in front of him. He's pressing that trigger. He's pushing through that gun. And he's popping it. Pop, 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 pop. You know, and he's going to throw. I can tell you by looking at this guy, he's got very little muzzle flip. I haven't seen this for this, vid, this picture. I looked it up the other day. It is from 20, 2020, I think, maybe 2021. I, I don't know, but but I but it's one of our training classes we did with somebody because the floor is white. I, our floor is gray now, so I can tell you that that was it. Uh, but what, what what's important about this is that that magical word, magical two words, muscle memory. And that's the only thing we need to really work on because muscle memory allows us to control the weapon and keep it out in front of us. And we are going to fall back to our weakest training. So in a real world situation, we shouldn't have to be thinking about anything, right? Getting in that car and driving someplace and you turn the corner at 60 miles an hour, you're not worried about it. But when we were 15 years old trying to turn the corner, we were a little nervous about how to gas in or drive out or, you know, all that stuff. But as we did more and more and more of it, we got better and better and better at it. So that's kind of what we do with muscle memory. We got to just work through it, train through, train your muscle memory through consistent practicing. So that being said, when's the last time you put a system together or a training thing that you need to follow? Be honest with me. Tell me. You go the range and have a plan. Are you putting 15 rounds in a magazine and just blasting away? Are you making every bullet that you shoot count? That's the key thing we need to get to. Stop being such bullseye guys and start working on quick defensive accuracy. Defensive accuracy is more important than anything else. You get the proper grip. You put proper stance. You work through all the stuff we're talking about. You push that gun out in front of you and run it. You know, a, a firearm is just a tool, and the tool needs a craftsman. Be the craftsman, guys. Be the craftsman. All right. Let's hit that number five. 
Train that muscle memory through consistent practice, repetition, improving your point shooting skills. This is the next thing we talked about. Point shooting is something we have to physically do on a regular basis. So I'm, I'm challenging each and every one of you on the call tonight. There's 15 of you. I want you to comment below and said, I will try point shooting. And I want you to tell me next week how you did. Matter of fact, if you want, take some pictures of your point shooting targets. Send them to me, and I'll kind of give you some advice on what's going on or what, what's causing most of the st stuff that's happening. We did a couple videos many months, many, many years ago called The Shot Doctor. Johnny thought it was funny to put my head on a doctor's shirt with a stethoscope, and I would look at people's targets without knowing what they are and tell them what they were doing wrong or identifying some of the things I think they're doing wrong. And it really works out. So if you have an opportunity to get to the range and work on your point shooting, I want you all to start at three yards. Three yards, that's it. I want you to get eight-inch paper plate. I want you to do, well, let's do 25 rounds. Let's do five shots at a time. If you conquer five yards, I'm um, three yards right away, like you, you, and remember, you can't cheat. You can't look at your sights. You just got to push it out in front of you. Find the paper plate, keep both eyes out, focus on the paper plate, and let the bullets impact. If you win that, go on, go ahead and go up to the five yards. And then I want you to send pictures of your of your paper plates if you can for me. Let me know how you did. It would be an awesome challenge for you to conquer these. And if you could get past 21 foot. I truly, I said in the video a while back, point shooting is one of those things that you need to make sure you understand. But I wouldn't point shoot past 21 yard, 21 feet, seven yards. I think it's a little more, uh, a more, little more challenging for us, as well as we are responsible as gun owners, and we're responsible for our bullets as well. So we don't want to get out there doing some crazy thing in a high defense situation and do something wrong. So. Uh, practice through repetition, improving your point shoot skills. All right. I th I found that I thought that was cute. That mu muscle with them with with the uh, with with the big uh, uh, bullets. All right. So not everyone can do this. None of my students that do not take training classes with us can do this. But if you're in an outdoor range or you have a range in your backyard. You want to incorporate movement into your training to simulate real life scenarios where you need the may, may need to move and shoot. There are plenty of drills that you can put together that you do not need to move. Uh, you can you you can use a target with two paper plates on it and rotate between the two of them. But anytime you move with your feet. You're going to drop your accuracy. Let's, so this is why it's so important with point shooting that you get really, really good at it. Because in a, in a situation, let's say, for instance, you are 60% uh, accurate, stagnant, standing still in point shooting. You're going to be about 25% when you start moving with a gun. So we want to be... We want to incorporate moving into your training to simulate real scenarios. This is kind of one of those deals... So if you're at the range and you cannot move, like our range, in our training class, we offer the mobility once we're comfortable with the student. But if you're at a range that allows you to move, uh, even allows you to draw from the holster and all that stuff, you want to take advantage of all that stuff you can. Now here we can't, a lot of the indoor ranges won't allow you. But you can start at low and ready, which means the gun's in your hand, the, the weapon is loaded, and it's at the table and you can pick it up and find your sight system or point shoot with it and just co focus on the target best you can and pop the rounds and if you need to you know what i would tell you most of the time is we want to focus on that 21 foot rule and always be moving away from the target not towards the target it's very unlikely in the situation that you would be moving to the bad guy I mean, there, are, there are some options it can be, but when in our class the other week, uh, well, there are some videos of this. Uh, we actually set the target 
at the furthest distance. We set the student at three yards, maybe less than three yards, like two and a half yards. And then as the as the student shot, we had them back up to a point and we had the target come to them. And I called the shot. I told them when they could shoot. And the only shot they had was the center mass of the head. So we it was pretty fun because it kind of got some people nervous, especially the people with the red dots on the guns, because they don't have those focused out for point shooting. They have them focused out for a distance. And then you almost have to point shoot when the when the target's at your feet or arm distance away. So we did, uh, I don't know, it's four or five times. We had the guys backing away from the bad guy, get off the X, two shots to the chest. And then come behind cover, change a magazine, go around the cover, transitioning right or left, and then coming back. There's a lot of different drills you can do that will get your heart rate moving a little bit more and get you more real scenarios. Because definitely, let me tell you something, in a real situation, when shit hits the fan, you are not going to be standing still because your body will not let you stand still. It's going to want to run. It's going to want to escape. It's going to want to get away. And you're going to do everything you can to to listen to it. But you need to fight it to be there to be there for your family, right? You can't can't leave your family your family in 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 trouble and you run away. That's not going to work. You can't be a George Costanza. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw the the birthday party one. Where George, George is at his wife's, his future wife's uh, grandmother's house because the kids are having a birthday party, and there's smoke, there's smoke coming out of the kitchen, and George pushes the grandmother over and screams fire and runs out. I mean, he he he, he can't do that. He left that. He left the kids in there. He left the grandma knocked her down. I mean, he did everything. So, don't don't be a George Costanza. Protect your family. I carry for three reasons. It's four now. It's uh, Heidi, Jacob, Johnny, and Hillary. Hillary's, well, Johnny's, Hillary's better half, or Hillary's, Johnny's better half, one of the two. Uh, But we like her. We're going to keep her. Hope Johnny likes her because she's part of the family now. Be very awkward. Very awkward if, 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 if something happens. So. Uh, she's part of the family now. She's sarcastic like the rest of us. We love her to death. All right. Uh, what well, popped on? Pop. Hang on. What's going on here? So here's number seven, and this is kind of what I told you before. That three five seven. This is not a picture of our range. I took a picture of this because I found it the other day of the old what the old range looked like before uh, the scenario. And what we've done to it. So, but practice shooting from distant distances, angles to improve your accuracy in various situations. The distance is a big deal for point shooting because we need to conquer it to a point. I would tell you always use some kind of silhouette target, get your tactical black magic marker, load the magazine up with five rounds. Now, you can point shoot with a revolver too, guys. You don't need to have a semi automatic pistol to, to, to point shoot. Uh, but you want to put the five shots down range, bring it in, mark those five shots off. You know what what you impacted, circle them, cut them, you know, mark a black marker with them, do what you got to do, and then put the bar target back out there so you can really use the same target but identify each shot. Our job is to identify each shot and and learn from them, right? I, 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 I don't know if I've said this to you before, probably have, but I'm, I say a lot of stuff multiple times. As a firearms instructor, we tell you things over and over and over again. Sooner or later, you guys are going to snag it and get it. You know, I, I every week, every day, even today, we had a class that I, I had a, a husband and wife come in, and they were new to shooting. And by the time I got done with them, I probably said the same thing eight times differently, but it came off. And then finally, he says to me, Oh, I get it now, right? And he got it now because I was throwing it at him each way. And sooner or later, it soaked in. And that's kind of where you need to do. We never learn from winning. 
we never learn from winning. We learn from losing. And if we're always winning, we ain't learning. So remember that, guys. Get get to your point where you're about to lose and you'll learn more, right? We need to get to that point where just about where we can't get. Like for me, point shooting at three yards, easy. Point shooting at five yards, good. Point shooting at seven yards, I need to work at it. That's the one I fail all the time. Matter of fact, in the video, and I've told you guys many times, I do not edit. I'm not smart enough to edit a good shot. When I did my five shots on the bad guy at 20, at, at, at seven, seven yards, 21 feet, they were all at his hip. They were, they were never, they, they weren't even in center mass. And that's got, you know, that's what came off that day. I didn't run the pistol good that day. I, I didn't change it because that's what we do. We, I want to show you that even a firearms instructor has a bad day. But you want to get to the good days. You want to get there. Now, how would I know that I'd suck at 21 foot if I've never done it? And that's what you guys need to do. You need to get there, shoot on a regular basis, get comfortable, and know your distances that you're not going to have a situation because we're not going to have time to think about anything in a real situation. All right. Practice shooting from distant, from distant, from different distances. As far as angles and things like that, you're not going to see a fat boy like me get on one knee or anything else like that. Um, but if you had the ability to get to a range that you could maybe lean, you know, or maybe, maybe shoot from your back. I've seen a lot of guys that do these tactical videos where they're, Got the guy on the back, and he's shooting between his legs at the bad guy. That's all great and dandy and wonderful, but in a real situation, I want to be mobile as much as possible. I've told you, I've told you, I've told you. If I'm running, you've got a problem. <laughs> you've got a problem. All right. <clears throat> tip number seven there. All right. Tip number eight, focus on those low round counts. This is so important. It's so valuable. This is such a valuable piece of advice that it should be burned into your brain as much as possible. Yesterday, two young kids came in. Not, I say young, 21, 22 years old, new to shooting. Both had their concealed. Both had their guns. They're back there blasting away learning absolutely nothing, shooting as fast as they can. You know, I went back there. I kind of like, hey, hey, let's 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 calm it down here. You got to you 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 don't need to shoot that fast. There's no what are you getting out of that? Well, I wanted to see how fast I could shoot. Well, I get it. But you now, you know, don't do it again. Get yourself focused on getting good accuracy. I gave them both paper plates. I said, if you can't get this paper plate, you got that target way out there. And all those, all those bullets were on the ground, on the wall, in the center. That none of them were on the target. So back it back in, get it down to that three to five yards. Put five rounds in the magazine and focus on your front post, and just press the trigger. Don't pull it. You don't need to run it super slow, but you don't need to run it so fast you're not controlling the weapon. And they went back there and brought me the paper plates up earlier, and they were all good shots. And that's all it takes. But you got to focus on that low round count. The more time you spend loading a magazine and dumping a magazine, there's so much bad habits that can happen after the fifth round. Take a Glock 19, for instance, it holds 15 rounds. If we put a 15 round magazine in the Glock, and we began to cut the rounds. Do you think the first five are probably the most accurate? And then after that, you're just along for the ride until it's empty? Now, think about that. We just start 30 rounds out of 50. 30 rounds out of 50. And out of those 15 rounds, you were accurate with five of them. What percentage is that? And now you've got all the rest of them. Where'd they go? You have no idea or anything else like that. So, so now you've got another 15 rounds. That's 30. 
So within two magazines, you're almost at 30 rounds, and one of you got out of it, but bad habits. Now, if we did five rounds at a time, you could focus on 10 great magazines and great trigger engagements and great accuracy availabilities and become a better shooter right off the bat because now you're able to control the five shots and not wish you could control the five shots. So focusing on low round count drills is the most important thing. And my video my YouTube videos are filled with low round count drills. We do not train anybody in the store here with high round counts. It's always five shots. Even in the AR classes, guys, we do five shots. AR AR 15 holds 30 rounds. I get it. But focusing on those first five shots are the most important. And that's the key thing I'd recommend always. Focus on the low round counts. It will help you become more accurate, more proficient, and more uh more become a better shooter. All right, because obviously when we're out carrying the gun and we're out doing everything you want as high focus as possible. Danny, thank you very much, buddy. Uh, Dan, one of the guys leaving here tonight. I appreciate you, Danny. You're 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 the best. He comes every Tuesday night and spiffs the place up. He's 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 a good guy. One of our members here. All right, number 10, you know, I always talk. Number nine, you always talk about this. Seek professional training advice. Learn from the proper techniques. Receive feedback uh, on your point shooting skills. Now, obviously, a firearms instructor could help you tremendously. People always complain about, I don't really have a lot of people complain about our services here because we don't really charge a ton of cash for it but we get paid for what we do, right? So if you kind of think about the investment, right? Firearms training, where 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 prices are all over the board with this stuff. We've got guys that are charging, you know, if they're really, really popular and they know a lot of people and they've done their homework, you get people paying two, three, four hundred dollars for a training class. You know, I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm sure you're going to get a lot out of it. But at the end of it, I think a true training class, a three-day, eight hours a day training class, you're burning people so bad, man. You, you just got to get to a point how much you, you guys shot before, right? Um, obviously, you have. How much fun did it take you when you go to the range and you shoot 300 rounds? It's pretty fun, isn't it? Just blasting 300 rounds. Bah, 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 bah. Now, how much confidence did you build by doing that? How much accuracy did you work on by doing that? How much control of the weapon did you have by doing that? And a large percentage of the time, you're not really picking up any good habits by doing that. It's always the bad habits we're picking up. So having a professional help you changes your accuracy you can maybe figure it out you could maybe buy an ebook and stop and stop shooting low and left once you found out what's causing it um and spend a little bit of money on that four dollars and nine nine cents i mean that may be a good idea but at the end of it the instructor's going to help you tremendously work through your weaknesses and your strengths now, not everybody has a firearm instructor that they know or they trust or they can get to. And not everybody has the ability or the financial wealth to hire a, fire, uh, a, a firearms instructor. But I can tell you this, the cost of ammo up there the way it is, how about if I told you without the firearms instructor, you're going to be about 60%, maybe 40, 30, 40, 40% accurate. 40% accurate without a firearms instructor. How about 80% accurate with a firearms instructor? Don't you think the classes would pay for themselves? It was not too long ago, guys, when the rounds that we pay for today, I have. 
we got bulk nine right now in the store and it's about 26 cents around where on top of you running into back in the day when that same bag of nine millimeter was 78 or 78 cents around and now you're burning up a bunch of rounds trying to figure out how you can become accurate with a pistol it just becomes more and more um confusing it comes more and more frustrating with you to figure out that's why we wrote that ebook because 90 percent of the people who send me messages through youtube uh are all about why it's one of the biggest videos we do or the bigger biggest content we do is why i shoot low and left and you know when if when we're able to solve that for people you become more accurate. So how do we find a good firearms instructor? I think I know one. But if you can't get to us, guys, and I understand that, you can't get to a Jim and his wife came from Maryland. They went to Disney World and came to came to Florida. And one of their most important stops was they left Mickey to come to my store and see our studio and see us. <laughs> I was, I was so humbled by that. When they came here, I gave them a quick little class. They weren't expecting it. They weren't expecting it at all, but I was so uh, humbled by the fact that Jim and his wife came all the way from Maryland to come to Disney because Jim's a Mickey guy. He loves Mickey mouse. And it was one of those deals where when he drove now, keep in mind guys, on paper, it's only two and a half hours, but it was more like three and a half hours for them getting through all that traffic and everything else like that. So when they came here, I gave them a free class. I I, I had them come and we didn't do a full class, but she'd never shot a pistol before. And she, she shot better than Jim did. Um, but the idea of it was I wanted to give them something to show them I appreciate them. And what they do, we get a lot of people doing that to us on a regular basis. So how do we find a good instructor? We go to the two places that hire or build or put more instructors in business. That is the NRA. And that is the United States Concealed Carry Association. Both of these are accredited places that allow you to find good instructors. If you go to the NRA, put your, put your uh, zip code in. They're going to give you a list of qualified instructors. And then you can kind of work through your numbers there and find out the best scenario for you. Secondary, the United States Concealed Carry Association. They actually, we are, the whole family are, are certified. Johnny, Jacob, uh, Heidi, and myself, and Natasha, who is, was with us during that class. We had five people that came directly to us, and we got certified. All of us got certified through them. And, uh, you know, one of the deals with them is they have a full accredited system as well. They have an online system. You can go directly to their portals, put your zip code in, and they will give you qualified instructors. Just don't go by the first one you find. Look at the reviews, guys. Look at their YouTube reviews. Look at their uh, Google reviews. We are fortunate that we have five-star Google reviews, all about 400 and some odd of five-star Google reviews through our firearms training. We have probably 150 to 200 on, on Facebook. And we are very fortunate that we have a great group of people that really are passionate of what we do for them. And they show it through our Google reviews. And that's what you need to look at. And then next thing you do is go talk to them. I had a couple came in today. They came all the way from Sanibel. They wanted to know about us. They wanted to know what's going on, why are you getting so many reviews. And by the time they were done, I booked a class for them to come back next week and get comfortable. You know, the world is, is not getting safer. It's getting tougher and tougher and tougher. And we need to make sure that we understand that we are our first line of defense. It's not the cop's job to save your life. It's your job to save your life. And if you need help finding a great instructor, you want to get some advice, well, I'm always an email away, guys. You can always make a comment on any of our videos, and I will respond. I respond to every comment while I can, right? As the business gets busier and busier and busier, it's very challenging for me to do all this stuff. 
and stay on top of the emails and everything else like that. But when it's a passion of yours, a passion that I love that makes me want to do this day in and day out, I'm working on, let's see, we had gun show uh, the first. We had a gun show last weekend. I'm working on 14, 16, 17, 18 days in a row, seven days a week, because I love it, guys. I wouldn't work this hard for anybody else, I'll tell you that. And uh, seeking a professional training and learning uh, proper techniques and receiving the feedback on point shooting or any other training class, guys, any other training class at all. I don't really think you should start point shooting until you actually know what you're doing with a pistol to begin with. But the idea of it is most likely you're going to fall back to a point shooting situation anyways and high stress. So high point shooting is part of our arsenal. All right. Number 10 is stay focused. Stay calm and focus under pressure. The only way you're going to stay calm under pressure is by doing it on a regular basis and spending time behind the gun, spending time behind doing, assessing the situation, trust your instincts when point shooting, right? We, we know we want to be as comfortable as possible with it. All right. <clears throat> In conclusion, point shooting is a valuable skill for self-defense and can be significant difference in high stress situation. Whether you're a beginner looking to improve your techniques, these tips will help you become more accurate and a confident shooter. From proper grip and stance and side alignment and trigger control, uh, there's so much there. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more valuable tips and tricks to improve your shooting. All right, beautiful. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and pop this off. Come back to me. Go back to you. There we go. And there I am. There we go. Well, guys, that was a good night. We had good. We're we're, we're right on time. Five uh, fifty-seven minutes or so. We'll, we'll take it all the way to uh, to the uh, one-hour mark. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to some of the subscribers. Obviously, we spotted Jack's Spider Jack. Spider Jack. Uh, that's a unique name, Mr. Spider. Appreciate that. Natasha, Danny, Spider Jack. There we go. Sounds perfect. Oh, yeah. Natasha said, oh, yeah, that was a great class. Oh, yeah. Let's get me back here and get rid of this one. Yeah, there we go. Remove that. There I am. There I am. Oh, Rick Shepard. I'm glad you're back, buddy. Thank you very much for being here, my friend. Papa Weasel always, buddy. You're awesome. My daughter shooting uh Rick Rick Shepard. He says something here. Let's see what he says. My daughter shooting teams always has to say the safety rules every day, one or seven days a week. Didn't matter. You can't repeat them enough. 100%. Man. You know, I always tell people, like, we try to make comedic things. People try to get it a little bit better. I always find it's always better when we're having fun and laughing and having a good time. Um, that people gather more information than they do if someone's going to be stiff and hard on them. You know what I mean? So, um, <clears throat> the scenario... I always tell people is booger picker off the bang button. You never, ever, ever put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to fire. And then when you're done firing, you need to take your finger off the trigger. And, and that's the one thing. A firearm is just a tool and it does nothing without you. You touch the trigger when it's loaded or you touch the trigger when it's unloaded. This is why I'm not crazy about safeties on firearms. There are certain firearms that need safeties, rifles, shotguns, uh, 1911s. Those are carried cocked and locked. They need a safety. But a standard Glock or Smith or any of that stuff, the safety on the weapon is you. And they're always, no matter if it's shotgun, rifle, or pistol, you are the safety. That mechanical device can and will fail. You need to make sure 
that you understand what makes that gun go bang bang thank you richard appreciate that advice we appreciate that very much my friend oh here's jim jim responded uh, it was a great great visit uh, it was jim i really appreciate you and your wife uh, coming that time it was awesome let's see what he had here uh, it looks like natasha had a squid load oh okay my friend had a squid today in his rifle tore the oh yeah it would lucky did he get, did he get hurt yeah, well, you know, well, here's what a squid is, guys. A squid is when a bullet does not have enough powder to get out the barrel, and you put another bullet behind it, which makes it an, a, a, a bomb, basically. Very unlikely that this happens, but it can. Now, did you, were you close enough, Natasha, that you heard the shot? Did it sound like it was a full load shot? Because that's that's the telltale, guys. When you have a a bullet, squids are very very unusual. Normally, comes from reloading weapons, reloading ammo. Someone misses a powder uh, measurement, you know. And basically, what happens is is the 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 primer gets hit, and the powder fizzes out, and sends the bullet through the barrel, but not all the way out the barrel. And if you don't catch that blockage, and you put another bullet behind it, something's got to give. And his was the bolt carrier group, which is meant to be destroyed compared to the rifle blowing up in your hands, which could happen very easily. I'm glad he was not hurt. Um, I'm glad he was not hurt. And uh, uh it can happen to pistols, rifles, and shotguns. So we want to be very, very careful. Um, but normally, if you have a squid, it sounds totally different than a regular bullet. It, it doesn't have the kick. It doesn't have the noise of a regular bullet. Obviously, we're all wearing earmuffs, if you think about that. But you still should be able to tell the difference. He most likely ran one right behind the other trying to do a tactical class of some kind. Uh, I've actually seen a revolver one time on a in a in a gunsmith's um gunsmith's office that had five squids right behind each other. There was five bullets that were shot that they were low powdered and that's why it didn't blow up. But he had the he had the gun cut in half and the barrel itself had five bullets right behind it. Five bullets right behind. Kind of crazy if you think about it. All right. Um, Natasha, Jim made a comment again. Thank you, Jim. It was awesome. We'll be back on our next trip to Florida. John was very kind and was great way. Great has a great way of teaching. Most importantly, he treats you with great respect. Well, because you're part of my family, my friend. Uh, that you know anybody that becomes one of my students or one of my customers or part of my family. I want to be able to look you in the face, look you in the eyes, and I never want to feel like I have to hide or anything else like that. So, you know, you, we don't look for customers. We look for family. And, uh, you know, it's like having a brother-in-law in the business, but the brother-in-law you like. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good. Natasha said he's okay. Thank you, Jim, for those great comments. I really appreciate that. Hope you and your wife uh, are doing wonderful. Uh, he's okay. I wasn't there, thank God. That was a good time, Natasha. That would have been terrible. I'd hate to see that because it, it it can happen to anybody, especially when you're doing those tack classes and moving with guns and things like that. You don't hear everything you should have. Skywalker, I'm glad you're here, buddy. I'm glad you're here. I truly am. So in closing, get an opportunity, guys. Spend some time on our YouTube channel. Watch some of those videos. Uh, it is well worth it. You will find a lot of stuff on there. A large percentage of the people who go to our YouTube channel, we are, let me look at this real quick. Let me tell you. We are, one second here, guys. Let's look at the stats real quick. So I'm really, really, really excited about it. Uh, as we sit today, right now, at... Uh, 7.04 p.m. 
We have 28,816 subscribers. And we are getting closer and closer to the magic 30,000, which, which I hope we get there pretty, pretty soon here. And as it sits right now, we have over 4 million views, 4.5 million views. And we have been very fortunate that we get somewhere between like like in the last 60 days we've had 46,000 last 30 days excuse me we had 46,000 uh views on our videos so we average somewhere between 50 and 70,000 views a month and uh it is because of you customers because you you my family i mean you guys are always protecting us and you're always sending us stuff and you're supporting us in every way you can that being said you have an opportunity to pick up the ebook do what you can if you have the ability to look at that aura or aura pays for us to do these videos they sponsor us a little bit and we are wishing you to help them out as well so if you just click the link in the aura that'd be awesome and then if nothing else i want to tell you three things god bless be safe and remember you are your first line of defense. We'll see you next week. We've got some not cool things coming up, guys. We've got these ebooks. We've got a lot of different stuff happening. And uh, we were hoping you'll stay with us and stay tuned. Until next time, I love you guys. And we are going to play the video out here. Hang on a second. Let's see if I can find it. That's always something, right? I can't always find what I want. All right, here we go. Closing video. Goodbye.